Hello everyone and welcome to a really nice and sunny afternoon here in Stockholm One of the most beautiful capitals in the world Look at this Here we have the royal palace and Stockholm, over there is the southern island Gamla stan, royal palace Today I'm gonna talk about the Battle of Brunkeberg in 1471, October 10th, 1471. And you can say that the Battle of Brunkeberg in 1471 started here because the Danish fleet came here and they had all their boats here. And during that time this was an island so it was very easy for the Danes to all around the island put their boats and then they went all over there to a ridge over there that, that is called Brunkeberg and the ridge of Brunkeberg was the high ground and that was because the Danish wanted to go there because they wanted to control Stockholm and to control Stockholm they could do that from the ridge of Brunkeberg in those days Stockholm was only this island that we today call Gamla Stan, the old town of Stockholm so, this, so there were no buildings at the southern islands and no buildings here at all and the only thing that was on Norrmalm, the place north of Gamla Stan was the Clara Monastery and that remember that, Clara Monastery because that's really important in this battle of Brunkeberg for you to understand this drama you have to know some of the main figures. Sten Sture the Older was a regent in Sweden. And then we have Nils Sture who was also Mr. Sture but he was from another part of the Sture family. And then we have Knut Posse who was the really powerful man in Stockholm in the what is now old town of Stockholm. They were on the same side, the Swedish side. And then we have the Danish king, his name was Christian I and he was also supported by some powerful families in Sweden like the Oxenstierna and some farmers in Uppland and they supported the Kalmar Union, the Danish dominated union that Sweden belonged to during these days but to really show you how high the ridge of Brunkeberg was in the 1400s I will walk in this direction and show you Here I am at Vana dis Lunden, which is a park in the northern part of Stockholm. It's a very nice view up here. You can see all the way to the hospital Karolinska. That I'm showing uh, this park today is because I want to tell you about Brunkebergs Åsen. And that's a ridge that goes all the way from the north down in that direction to Gamla Stan. And this ridge has been very important in the Swedish history. Now I'm gonna walk up the ridge that's still here and to the church of Johannes. Johannes church is uh, also a church only maybe about 100 years old. It's not really that special but it's very very big and very you know grandiose type of church building. And up here I will tell you more about the background to this battle in 1471. I will show you Johannes Kyrka. Okay, now I'm gonna walk to the stairs over here uh, to show you the ridge, how steep it is nowadays and then you'll imagine that it was maybe 20 meters higher in the 1400s than it is today. Let's see. This was the place where the killer of Olof Palme ran after the assassination which was taking place down there at Sveavägen and he ran all the stairs up here and then the last anyone saw that killer was him running down this David Bagares gata over here but when you stand up here watching you really get the picture how low it is down there and how high it is up here and up here the Danish troops and the Danish king Christian the first had his troops and his stronghold and down there it was the gathering of the Swedish regent Sten Sture the older and he has many many hundred troops there a container of farmers from Dalarna from uh, all these uh, regions of Sweden around Stockholm that he had gathered to this battle 
So why was it a battle in 1471? The reason was that uh, in 1470 the Swedish king had died. His name was Karl Knutsson Bunde. And he has been kind of like an on and off king who had been uh, uh, sometimes pushed out of the country and then taken back. And he was king during three different periods. Sten Sture the Older, he was the most powerful person in Sweden at that time. And since the king had newly died in 1470, he started to think that maybe he should run Sweden. But the Danish king, Christian, he had been king in the 1460s and he wanted to have the crown back. So now a power struggle started between the Danish king, Christian I, and Sten Sture the Older, who was a Swedish regent. So this is Kungsgatan, as you can see here, and down there is uh, Hörtorget and the concert building. And that was the place where Sten Sture started the attack. So if you think that the, all of this is a ridge as high as Vanadislunden, this is where the battle started. And Sten Sture the Older, he had all his troops down there at Hörtorget, and he started to go up and try to attack. And, but he was forced down. The Danish was so strong and they shot and they, you know, killed so many people. But Sten Sture tried and tried and tried twice, but he was forced back both those times. But now Sten Sture the Older was really, really lucky because there was another Sture. His name was Nils Sture. They weren't really related, but they had the same name. And Nils Sture, he had to gather his troops from down here. And this was a swampy area, there were no city at that time, it was all swamp and there was a lot of woods here, so it was a really awful place to come up here. This, you have to remember, this was in October, so it wasn't really nice, you know, it was foggy maybe, maybe bad weather. And uh, anyhow, Neil Sture, he took his troops and went up the ridge from this direction and started to fight the Danish and now this was when the, the when the battle completely turned around. So let's do a recapture. This is Brunkebergs torg. Here we have the National Bank of Sweden and down there is uh, Särgels torg. Maybe you've been here and in that direction we have the Gamla Stan, Stockholm Royal Palace, Gustav Adolfs torg and all the historical buildings over there. So as I told you before, Sten Sture the Older, he had his troops down here. And Nils Sture had the troops from over there. And there was also a third man. His name was Knut Posse. And he, had, uh, he was in control of the Stockholm forces. And you know, Stockholm in that time was only what we consider Gamla Stan today. So uh, it was not really, really a big city or anything like that, but he had troops there and he started pushing up here and Nils Sture pushed from that direction and Sten Sture pushed on this direction. And one of the hardest parts of battles and one of the most bad mistakes of the Danish forces was that they tried to confront Sten Sture the Older down here at the Clara Monastery. Oh, listen to the church bells now. This was the place of Clara Monastery and this was a decisive place for the Battle of Brunkeberg. And from that direction, the Danish troops ran down the ridge to confront Sten Sture the Older and all the troops because they wanted to kill Sten Sture the Older, of course. But what happened was that the Swedish side shot Christian I in his mouth and he lost many, many teeth. So when the Danish king was shot, he felt that, okay, now it's time to leave here. So exactly at this place was where the Battle of Brunkeberg was decided. So let's run like the Danish did. And now when the Danish came down here, you know, this was, as I told you before, this was an island. So to that island was a bridge. And Knut Posse, the man who was in control of Gamla Stan at that time, he had had men who traveled with boat to the bridge and they saw the bridge and they damaged the bridge so they would fool the Danes. So when the Danish came from that direction over here and crossing the bridge, they all went into the water and drowned. Maybe 500 soldiers went into the water and in those days they couldn't swim so they all died. 
so what happened after the battle of Brunkeberg? Well, Sten Sture the Older, he became the most powerful man in, in Sweden, he was a regent. And uh, Christian I, he was badly wounded after this uh, battle, so he never tried to conquer Stockholm again. Well, thanks for watching and uh, if you like this video, please share it to your friends so they can see Stockholm when it's sunny and nice afternoon. And uh, I hope someday, maybe in the future, you can come here and see all the places for yourself. Because when the summer is out, Stockholm is the most beautiful place on this planet. Okay, now I'm gonna join my fika and see you next time. Bye bye.